State University, and I am going to give you some tips today about how to write a method section and a results section for an academic article, presumably something that you would see in a journal. Um, so when you start, um, I typically put the research questions at the end of my literature review. Um, and here you can see I have the end of my literature review here and I have all of my research questions which were previously supported um, by the literature that was covered. Um, sometimes people like to put the uh, research questions embedded within the literature review and so when they talk about one particular concept or theory at the end of that section they say and so the following research question or the following research or the following hypothesis is proposed and then they name it there and then they go in to talk about a new concept. There's no right or wrong um, in general with that particular approach or which approach you might take so just do whatever feels best. When it comes to method, I am a huge proponent of um, slowly rolling into it. And so remind the reader what type of a study that you're doing. Remind the reader um, just in general what it is that you're looking at. And so here we have using an IRB online survey, so I'm reminding them of the method of voting aged adult citizens living in 14 Super Tuesday states. This study sought to understand the relationship voters held with candidates in the week leading up to Super Tuesday during the U.S. presidential primaries for the 2016 election. Um, and so I'm giving them a little bit of a reminder that uh, it was a survey, it was online, it was for voting age citizens, um, it was around Super Tuesday for the primaries, and it was about um, the relationship that the voters had with the candidates leading up to that primary series. So. Um, just uh, do whatever feels right with regard to the method um, sort of warm-up statement, but definitely remind the reader of your methodology and then just a general statement or two in very plain English about what it is that you're looking for. And in this case, it was the relationship voters held with candidates. Um, that's how I, I uh, ticked that one off. Um, we went a little bit further and, and uh, because this particular study uh, made use of a certain type of a term and categorization and we further defined that um, here in that second paragraph before we went into the subheads. So in the subheads, you're generally gonna have subheads for sample and procedure. You're gonna have one for instrument, um, and uh, you might have one for design um, if you have an experiment. Um, so we'll go ahead and start with the sample and procedure. Um, so we used an Amazon Turk um, sample here, and so of course we disclosed that. Um, and then we talked about anytime you're going to pay um, uh, respondents or participants in your study, you definitely want to um, say how much they were paid and give further details on that, which we did. Um, and then you want to give general demographics about these particular people, which you can see here in this paragraph. Um, we give the gender for them and the age, as well as um, other information like um, uh, race and education and salary, and then also political party ideology. Sometimes I save some of my very general demographics for the very beginning of my results section because I like to roll into my results section um, in that warm-up type of a fashion as well. And so if I'm saving some of my demographics for my results section, I'll do the traditional demographics, um, things like uh, age, gender, um, race, etc. Uh, in the method section under the research subjects. And then I'll save the more study specific demographics, like maybe um, how many hours on average the subject spends online, or um, whether the subject has voted before, whether the subject intends to vote this time, or, or things that just relate to that particular study. Those demographic questions that I asked for, I would put those in the beginning of the results section to warm me up into the results. So um, when you get to the instrument section, uh, you definitely want to make sure that you're, de you're describing every single measure that you're going to be using in your data analysis in this particular manuscript. So if you had, let's say, five different scales in your overall study and you're only using two of them in this manuscript, then you should only talk about the two that you're using. It, you would just um, save the discussion of those other three scales for when 
and you're writing up a manuscript that talks about them. Uh, you want to again start out with a quick little rehash of what it is that you're looking for and so this goes the key concepts at play in this research study were POPR, credibility and cred I'm sorry credibility of the candidates and um, political information efficacy. So I have three different um, general scales that are being used in this particular study um, for this manuscript. So then um, after you have named what your um, scales are, you should have a paragraph or so for each scale. And in that description, you wanna say um, what the seminal piece was for the particular scale. Um, you wanna say how many items were in the scale and um, how it was that you did the uh, data analysis. Was it a um, factor analysis? If so, what kind? Was it a summative index? Regardless, what is the alpha on them? Um, were any items dropped because uh, they had poor reliability? And then also give an example of the types of um, things that went in to the scale. So things like, um, let me see if I can find one in here. Um, I don't actually see, well, learning, uh, uh, oh no, 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 I don't see the examples um, of them as I look in here. So you would want to have an example of uh, like what it meant um, to be credibility. Oh, here's the example. Um, for credibility, you'd want to say, um, here were the items on the scale. There were only um, six items on here, so you could, you could list um, several of them. Um, untrustworthy, trustworthy, unqualified, qualified, unreliable, reliable, among others. So you don't need to list every single thing, but give the reader an idea of how it was measured. Um, and so this one was a factor analysis, and so this explains what type of factor analysis it was, um, as well as uh, the total variance explained, and then it gives for each of the factors, it gives um, the alpha that relates to it, and then it goes into uh, the next um, type of scale. Uh, of course, you're going to want to refer to a table. This is an actual journal article where tables are embedded um, in a, a written manuscript using APA style. More than likely, your tables will all be pushed to the end, and you're just going to refer to tables one and two, and then you'll find them at the end of the manuscript. Um, but make sure that your tables are properly APA formatted. All right, then we get to the results section. Now, with the results section, I do like to do a warm-up, and you can see there's not one in this particular article because there were a lot of results, um, so we, we needed to save the space for this, but I would warm it up in much the same way that I did the last one. I would remind the reader that I did an online survey to look at the relationship that voters had um, with the candidates um, in the primary leading up to Super Tuesday, and then I would um, uh, say things like, um, you know, how many of them had voted in uh, the previous election and um, other types of things that had happened as a result um, that were connected to this study. Um, so then um, you will go into uh, subheads and it's very helpful if you make your subhead relate to each of the different um, uh, categories or, or areas that you're looking in. So I had a, um, a research question uh, that dealt with relationship that was RQ1A. And notice I don't just say RQ1A was answered by blah. I'm reminding the reader of what RQ1A as well as RQ1B uh, meant in real words so that the reader doesn't have to flip back. And so uh, make sure that you're, you're giving this a um, high level of readability with with regard to how you're writing it. Um, and then I'm using proper APA style in writing up the overall results here. Um, and this was an ANOVA, so I talk no, not only about the um, main effects, but the interaction effects um, with the post hoc tests as well. Um, and you can see here that uh, not only did I give a summary in answering RQ1A, here we found this, in answering RQ1B, we found this, and then I gave an even um, more concise summary in English where it's very easy to understand. Um, so you would go through and you would do that for all of the different areas that you were looking at as you continued on in writing your paper. Now, when you get to the discussion section, your discussion section um, is going to start out with the um, 
uh, overall, uh, what is the big picture finding that you have? And then paragraph by paragraph, you're gonna tease into really analyzing your findings so that um, you relate it back to the studies that you actually cited to um, set up your study from your lit review. And so if you had a finding that was contrary to previous research, then you wanna say maybe why that happened as a part of your study, or if it reiterated something that you had cited in the lit review, then you wanna say that this just continues to amplify uh, the previous knowledge in that particular area. And you don't want to just um, come up with uh, big bold statements on your own, you want to relate them to the previous research in order to make them um, really understand how your research fits into the context of the overall topic. And of course, um, as you're doing this, you might feel like, oh, I should, you know, restate uh, the numbers that I reported in my results section, and you should not do that. Um, you can generally describe and remind the reader in plain English what you found in your results section, but do not repeat the actual numbers of um, your ANOVAs or your t-tests or your regressions. Um, just talk about them in general terms and spend the majority of your time relating your information in the discussion section to um, how this fits into the overall understanding of the knowledge that we now have on this topic as a result of your contribution to it. So that discussion section is going to start with that big picture um, uh, uh, view and then of course it's going to talk about the theory development as a part of that. You might go uh, research question by research question as you get through that. Then you're going to have limitations. Um, you're going to have future research. And then at the very end, you need a conclusion. Um, so this is how you uh, go about writing the method section and the results section and a quick preview of how you tie it all together in your discussion section. So I hope that your studies were phenomenal and that you have a great time writing them up so that you can share them with the academic community.